Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Porky here from Porky's Corner. But you already know that, don't you? Because that's why you've tuned in. Today, we're joined by Damien from Morecambe in Lancaster. How are you doing, Damien? You all right? Good, thank you, Russ. How are you? I'm all right. What have you been keeping? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Hard day at work, but it's done now. Yeah. Uh, what I'll do, I'll fire some questions at you and just give me uh, just a couple of minutes on each one and then we'll work through them, yeah? It's, yeah, no worries. Well, today's your debut and it's all about you. You've got the platform <laughs> now and the floor to say what you say what you want, basically. We don't edit out, out unless it's a bit heavy. <laughs> but uh, just give me a, a, an answer for... We'll speak about it for a couple of minutes on each one and we'll work through and we'll get more done that way. All right, instead of sometimes you can... And I'm guilty of this as well. We talk about one topic, and then we drift down other avenues because this is what boxing does to us all. You see, it's all designed for us to get uh, to send us bang. Yeah, it gets political. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about Fabio Wardley fighting uh, Eric Molina? What do you think to that on a pay per view show? Chief support. Who's that chief support to? No, oh, they're saying it is, but I, I'd be surprised if it were. But. Um. Fabio Wardley, he come from the white collar background, did he? Yeah. And Molina is that Eric Molina? Eric Molina, school teacher. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't personally, I wouldn't say it was a pay per view chief support. Yeah. How could you? Is um. Has he had many stoppages, Wardley? He's had a few, hasn't he? But he's well. My own opinion, my opinion of it is this: right, Fabio Wardley, he's he's got a he's got a belt, hasn't he? And he's moving forward. And maybe it might be the right fight for him. I don't know, but I think the old pay per view is garbage. But it's about your opinion. What what do you think about the fight? It's not personally one that needles my interest. If I'm honest with you, you could take it or leave it. Depending on who its chief support to would depend on whether or not I'd watch it. Well, this is how I look at it, in my opinion. Uh, they're going to have to fly Eric Molina in from America, aren't they? We're in the middle of yeah. a pandemic. We've got all that messing about and that. Why can't they just pick a kid up from the UK for Wardley to fight? There's plenty out there. That want, I was going to say, there's, yeah, there's plenty out there, isn't there? Like, domestic level, you could put him in there with pretty much anyone at domestic level and yeah. see how he fares, you know, before you start trying to fly people in. I think that's a bit... Maybe Molina might be a bit out of his reach as well. Might be a step too far. I know he's... What age is he now, Molina? Shot to bits, man. He's pushing 40, man. He's shot to bits. In my opinion, they could have got Cash Alley, Nathan Gorman, Nick Webb, any of those guys would have took that fight. Cash Alley. Yeah, Richard Towers had licked his lips at taking that fight, wouldn't he? Of course he would have done. Yeah, Richard would have wanted that. Dennis would have wanted that. They'd have said, yes, please. Fighting on Sky, throws a crumb. But they've, it looks like they've kept it in-house again and they've gone for some working with somebody that's not from the UK because they don't want to help anybody in the UK. They work with somebody from America and Eddie's got options on Molina if Molina wins, I've been told today. So all bases are covered, aren't they? Typical Eddie Earn move for you. Well, you'd have thought they'd put Nathan Gorman in with him at least, wouldn't you? But all right, then moving on from that, uh, Ricky Atten's kid on a pay per view on his debut. What do you think to that? Again, I think Eddie's licking his lips at that one, and he's trying to, uh, try to push the Atten product, which you can't blame him for, I guess. If if he sees something, if he sees something in that Campbell Atten, then but. Again, I'm not sure it's pay per view worthy to be on that card. I'd have, I'd have maybe try to build him a bit first before you even start to look at that. Maybe if he puts bums in seats in front of a TV or whatever, I'm not too sure, but that would only be from his dad's name, I imagine. Can we have Conor Ben make his debut on a pay per view? Was that a pay per view? Mm. Yeah. Again. Again, at that early stage, was was that off his dad's name or I don't know. what? What they, what they were seeing in the gym for him could maybe put on an explosive performance and rest people card, talk about that. Rest at cards made up as uh, 
Kura Mani and Baker, and obviously Dylan White, Povetkin too. Dylan, in British title at all, Povetkin, uh, 42 this year, this summer. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's probably the most dire pay-per-view that they've ever put on. I've been very critical of it years about Sky, and so has my mate Dale Nichols, the voice of hardcore pay-per-view. So as other people that I know uh, doing what I do, and this has got to be the worst ever what I've ever seen. It's scraping the barrel. And something like this should be 10 quid. They're charging 20 quid. It's embarrassing. Uh, and I just wonder how, how they can have the brass neck to charge 20 pounds for that show. I just don't know. I just think it's the way the way Eddie likes to push his fighters. Um, even even old son back. I, I personally think Eddie's done a ma- a wonderful job with Dillian White keeping him away from any world title shots. Like Dillian White were that unhappy the left years ago, wasn't he? If he was that unhappy about not getting a title shot, he's in on it with him. They're just playing good cop, bad cop to fans. This is what happens. This yeah, what maybe happens. Eddie's maybe Eddie's sat him down and said, "Look, like." We're going to push you that WBC route, and there's always that rivalry with Joshua. So you could always jump in at any given time. But I think that's distracted Dillian from where he could have potentially. Because where's he ranked in other rankings? Oh, Dillian. Dillian. Well, he was before Povetkin iced him. He was in uh, top five or six all the way across the board, wasn't he? I don't know where he is now. What? I mean, he's still trying where... to WBC, isn't he? He's no good to Eddie in any other organisation except the WBC, is he? No, and I don't. I think if he take when he fights Povetkin again, I think he's he's going to be left in no man's land if you ask me, because I don't see any other outcome as similar to the first fight. He doesn't seem to learn his lessons from. I've seen him eat that that uppercut that Povetkin slept him with. I've seen him eat that off five or six different fighters, and he just never seems to learn from it. Always seems to eat it, and he got his light shut off in that fight, and I just see it happening again. All right, then. Well, moving on from the can't, man. Anybody who wants it can't get it. Isn't that right, Dillian? Can't, man. Moving on from him. Uh, Usyk, will he take a step aside? Well, from interviews I've seen in the last day or two, I think that the ball's already rolling for him to step aside, isn't he? Or maybe fight George Joyce for an interim WBO, I think I heard somewhere. Yeah. All right, then. Well, uh, I've been told he's not taking step aside. Uh, but we'll see how it plays out, won't we? It's a good little scenario they've got going, in it? Script writing. Could you imagine Liverpool and Man United being like this about playing it cup final? They're going to play. They're not going to play. It's up to Klopp. It's up to Solskjaer. They'd be out, out wars, wouldn't they, in the streets? Yeah, you just wouldn't have it, would you? No, so why do we put up with it? I mean, UFC at moments pissing all over boxing, isn't it? They've got all top ten fighting, aren't they? All... See, I have to agree with you there because I am a, I am a big MMA fan. Like, a... no, we don't get any of this, do we? No. Dithering. I think the way Dana White's monopolised MMA, I think like the backed against the wall in that sport. You know, he he literally is he's like the Vince McMahon of MMA, isn't he? and I think that's what Eddie Hearn's trying to be in boxing. Yeah, but it won't happen in boxing. It's 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 it won't happen. Uh, all right then. Eubank, what do you think about all this week Sourlands and all that? What do you think? Um. See, I'm really I'm really not a fan of Chris Eubank Jr. I think I think his output. I think his output's off the scale in fights, but he just doesn't seem to. I don't. I, I don't. I personally don't see him winning a serious version of a world title. He might. Is the talks of him fighting Murata for the WBA? I don't but, know. Um, there's, a, there's there's talkers and there's Smoky Bacon Walkers, and there's a lot. From what I can see, there's a lot of talking going on at the moment, isn't there? Yeah, you know I, mean? I think. Um, yeah, I don't see him winning a serious version of the world title. I think he might have maxed out winning two IBOs, if I'm honest. He's, um, there's t- 
obviously there was talk of um, he said Kell Brook was a warm up fight for him. Like I'm not sure it's a warm up fight, but I think I think his punch power and his output, I think it would overwhelm Kell, and you might you might see him like start to worry about his, them eye sockets again. Yeah. All right then. Over, over twelve rounds, you, them eye sockets could become suspect against Eubank Junior. All right. Jo Billy Joe, what next? Oh, I'd love to see him versus Golovkin or Canelo, if I'm honest, or someone big in the UK. Maybe put him in there with Callum Smith or even... Um, yeah, I'd like... Yeah, I'd like to see him against one of them top two, personally, yeah. Golovkin or Canelo. I think he's... I think he's got the ability, if he stays active, to be as consistently good as he looked in that Lemieux fight. It's just getting him to be that consistent, stay in the gym, get him the fights, yeah. and just keep him interested. But fantastic fighter, unbelievable. I'm a big, big fan of Billy Joe, and I would really, really would like to see him get one of them big fights, just to see how he fares. Even if he takes a loss, do you know what I mean? People say records are for DJs, and... It's better to live a life of saying, do you know what? I can't believe he crippled me with that body shot, do you know, rather than say, well, what if I'd have beat him? Yeah. All right, then. Because uh, it's about your opinion today. I'll just help you a long way. Joe Gallagher's stable. Uh, the whisper in the boxing community is that he's been dealt a few uh, wrong hands, you know, in the last... 18 month to a year from match room. What do you think? You know, there's Callum Smith, they didn't deliver a world title for him. It had to be Sowlands, didn't it? Beefy Smith, they signed him. He's it looks like he's parked up. Natasha Jonas, they've not got a Harper rematch. They've got Harper fighting some other people in some like mini tournament, but she, she, they've given her easy fight, haven't they? But Natasha's just on outside looking in. There's other, it looks to me like there's, there's, I don't know. It looks to me like there's, there has been a, a bad hand dealt to Joe Gallagher. What, what do you think? Yeah, it would appear that way, wouldn't it? Like like you said, like Natasha Jonas, people are screaming for her to get that rematch and there's just not even been a whisper of it. Um, like you say, Sowerland's had to deliver for Callum Smith. And uh, it'll be interesting to see where Eddie tries to push Callum now, if he does, do you know what I mean? I think now someone that was in Callum's position, obviously coming from Joe Gallagher's stable. Yeah. Coming coming off the back of that loss, I think you'll see now if there is something going on with regards to Gallagher's fighters, do you know, because if Eddie doesn't push Callum Smith right now, then because he's a big he's a big name, isn't he, Callum Smith? Do you know what I mean? He, he could go anywhere, like he, he could fight anyone at that weight, or he could even go up. I'd like to see him go up personally. Like an afterthought, aren't they, Joe? Joe stable at the moment, isn't it? But yeah, at one point, Eddie were, Eddie were, couldn't do enough for them. But now all of a sudden, it just looks like they're discarded, like rubbish, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it's if your face fits and when it fits, you know, like yeah, something might have gone on with Joe and Eddie behind the scenes somewhere down the line that he might have spat his dummy out with and just never, never really got over and thought, I'm just not really gonna. Not going to hold them back, but just not, you know, subtly hold them back, if you will. Yeah. Do it on, uh, do it on the sly. Yeah, well, I, I hope that... Uh, I'd like to see Callum Johnson fight Boatsy or Yard. Callum Johnson, Yard. Or Callum Johnson... I'd like to see... Lyndon Arthur. Yeah, I, I wouldn't like to see him against Lyndon Arthur because I'm a big Lyndon Arthur fan and I would, as a fan of both fighters, I wouldn't... Don't get me wrong, it'd be a good fight to see, but... Personally, I'd, I'd like to see Callum Johnson in there with Bawatsi. I think he gets Bawatsi out of there scary quick, if I'm honest with you. I mean, but again, would would Eddie Earn push that fight when you've got um, Callum Johnson? How old is he? 35. Mm. You've got Joshua Bawatsi at 26, 27, is he? Yeah. How, how do you rebuild Bawatsi if he gets... If someone puts a demolition job on him at thirty-five year old, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and because he's not—he's got no interest in pushing Callum Johnson, really, has he? By the looks of it, Eddie. 
No. No, there's something going And on. I think I think he'd have to he'd have to be all in with Callum Johnson if he put him in with Boatsy because he would I think he would put a demolition job on Boatsy. This is how I look at it. They don't want no to do with Callum Johnson and he's he's dropped the biggest puncher in world boxing, and he put it B to B hundred percent KO ratio, and he over three year world champion. Maybe four yeah. years. I don't know, have to check that. It's getting on for a long time. Nobody reigned that long since Clinton Woods. You know what I mean? At RBF, I don't think so. But yeah. That's what makes me question if Bawatsi will ever win a world title. It depends oh, on sorry, Kovalev if Terbiev sticks around. Sorry, Kovalev might have reigned as long as Clinton, but Clinton Woods will have a free year. Kovalev had a long time with belts. Uh, but uh, Beaterby's had a long time with belts. And he's knocked them all out. Callum Johnson dropped him. I can't get it out of my head. And yet he's an after four, no, no talk of rematches. But yeah, they'll it's put... It's a good Derek, shot as well. They'll put Derek Chisora in three times with Dylan White. Well, twice, but they, talk, they keep dropping third one out, don't they? And they'll put Chisora in with... I don't know. They'll put him in with Usek, but yeah, the, the, who's like at the top of his game, but they won't put... Callum in with Viterbia again or Johnson or jo- uh, Boatze, Joshua Boatze Johnson I, I just think that it's sad and I think it's sad that nobody's mentioning Liam Smith I don't know I just think it's a bit yeah beefy they're mentioning Liam Williams all the time he's always in conversation and beefy did him twice yeah he's um, he seems to he seems to have got Gone away and rebuilt, don't he? Under Dominic Ingle, Liam Williams, and rebuilt. Like, there's, talk, <laughs> yeah. there's talk of him being this, this I... animal now that's ready to destroy anybody, do you know. But like, it's it's yet. To, he's given a good account for himself whenever I've watched him fight Liam Williams, like the last couple of times. Who's he beat though? Who's he beat? Who's any good since Beefy beat him? Tell me the names. <sighs> you can't tell me the names, can you? Not off the top of my head, I'd have to go to box record. So it's nobody of any note, then, is it? No. There you go, then. <coughs> I think that'd be a good fight for him, Eubank Jr. Yeah, yeah, it would be a great fight. Eubank Jr. against Beefy or Eubank Jr. against Liam Williams. But I think Liam Williams gets blown away by Eubank at 160. Blown Because Liam Williams, to me, he looks like one of them bully boys. They're all right until they get hit. When they get hit, I think he looks for a way out when he gets it. I do honestly, I think he looks for a way out. I think he's got quit in him. I might be wrong. I might be wrong, but I think he's got quit in him and nobody's going to say that. Are they, oh, you can't say that, fuck. He's icing people. You can't tell me who he's ice. <laughs> he's not icing anybody. He's icing bin men. Let's have it right. He's icing bin men. Now, one of them, we're about seven <laughs> foot four one. How, how did he make that way? He iced him. You can only beat who's in front of you, can't you, Damien? Right, moving yeah, this on. is true. Uh, women's boxing. Women's boxing. Do you, what level would you class Shannon Courtney at if she was a, a male? Would she be Southern area? Would she be world? Or would she be in middle? Where would you class her as, as a level of skill? I'd... You'd have to put her somewhere between amateur and novice. I'd, I'd say amateur or just above. Like, um, and that's no disrespect to any female boxer. I just think that the, you know, you can be working in a chip shop one week and win a world title as a woman in boxing at the minute. There's just not enough. There's not enough depth in any division. You know to. Yeah. Argue, argue, and you've got women jumping ship to go to MMA now. You know, swerving other fighters. It's I just don't think there's enough there's enough depth in the in the divisions to class any class any of them as like elite or world level at the minute. Yeah. Katie Taylor, Katie Taylor, she's she's a phenomenal talent. You know, but like you say, if if, if it translated into the men's so divisions, she's beating novices, yeah. so isn't she? You know what I mean? These people that are in GB teams, it, it's this is food and drink to them, this professional game, isn't it? Because there's nobody there for them to fight, is there? No, that's you know, it. To make matchups to keep them all apart and all that. They're going to keep Savannah Marshall and Chris, Clarissa Shields as part as long as they can. Shields is fighting at 154 now. Savannah's come down from one, she's going to fight at 175. She, 
to what one six six eight as she saw it last time. So or what would it one six one sixty? She just won't belt up, but she was going to fight at one seven five, wasn't she? So she can't do any more. Savannah, I don't think. I don't think I don't think she wants that fight, Clarissa she Shields. No, oh, she, she doesn't want, want that fight with Savannah, not at all. Why would Why would you jump into a different sport? Has she got any background in MMA whatsoever? No, 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 no. no. Whoa, 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 whoa. She's fighting. She's fighting at one five four next. The next fight. No, I meant Clarissa Shields. Sorry. Oh no, she no, she's she's boxing. She's in a boxing match next for world titles, unifying at one five four. Oh right, right. I've, I thought the next move was MMA. I've seen. I don't know. Somebody just sent me something. Hey, let me have a look. I don't. I don't think I've got it wrong. Maybe it's good. It'll be good if she does stick around then, because maybe there is a chance of that fight. But I still don't think she wants it personally. It's there, isn't it? The fight's there for her. Does she want it? WBA, WBC, IBF, WBO, one five four. She fights. Uh, in Flint, Michigan, on the 5th of March against Marie Eve de Carey at 154. So, if Savannah's fighting at 160, they could easily do it for 160 belts uh, at 158 if she wants. I'm sure, yeah, she'll take another two pound off, but I don't know. 100%. Yeah, fight can be made. So, Eddie Earn's got no excuses now because he's relentless, isn't he? He tells us, relentless Eddie, billionaire, he's got a billion dollars, billion dollar Eddie. Four and if out, fi- four and <laughs> out, super heavyweight, free by way of the Iceman, the, Ice the Billerity Iceman. Ice Man. Yeah, all right, all right. Then, uh, moving on, John Fury and Mickey Fio, will it happen? Uh, if not, who shit the pants out of a pair of them? I don't think it does now. I, I think it's gone on for too long. When, when it all first came about, both parties seemed keen for it, but. It seems to have fizzled out on one side, and um, it's a shame, really, because that could have, like, f- from background that you hear on these two people, do you know what I mean? That potentially could have been a good fight, like, for to to just sit and watch. Yeah. But no, I don't think it happens. Like I say, how long has it been going? There's been talks now. the The first I initial know. challenge was nine months ago. From and John, from John, from John, yeah, John. Is, man over John 50. said it, yeah, to any man over fifty, and um, yeah, that was nine, maybe ten months ago, and yeah, it's, I think it's dragging out now, isn't it? Like a dog with worms. Or... Yeah, but you're not answering question, Damien. Who do you think's shit the pants out the pair of them? Well, it's looking like John Fury, isn't it? To be honest, like Mickey's on your channel. Yeah. Twice, twice a month, once a month, and like week, he's, he's 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 constantly vocal in here about how he wants to fight, and he's got venues lined up, and he's got this and that. Um, I don't even know if it's so much his pants, but maybe he just I don't know. He's, he's he's maybe got this reputation, and does he want it? Does he want it shattering? Like if if Mickey was to win that fight. Do you feel, Damien, that uh, if anything, these videos that I've put out and that Mick's put out or we've done together, if anything, has shut John Fury up because he's not called anybody out for months, has he, since May? <laughs> Do you think it might just pipe? He might just think before he opens his gate in future. I think he's maybe just realised like he's been down the gym doing runs with his son and that and he's maybe just thought to himself, do you know what, I am actually 55 years old or whatever age he is. Like, maybe seven he's in May. Just, just seven in May. Call it 57, my apologies. Yeah, maybe just thinks like, because 57 is over the hill in it in fighting terms, you would yeah. you would think. Yeah, so we both agree then that John Fury is shit his pants. Okay, don't be frightened to to admit it on it because no what will happen to you. There's, there's, <laughs> there's people just talk loads of shit on social media. Just give him something to talk about, won't it? But I, I personally think he's shit his pants. If you want to keep not say, oh, it's up to you, but I think he's shit his pants. So, uh, all right, then that's one page done. Will Frank Warren ever be a force again in boxing? I 
think the only way he becomes a force again in boxing is if he manages to keep hold of um, Dennis McCann. Yeah. I think Dennis McCann literally is the future of Frank Stable. Obviously, you've got the present that are there. Like He has got some half-decent fighters and he has rolled the dice. I think... I think Eddie backed him against the wall and forced his hand there with them two fights, the Lyndon Arthur, Anthony Yard and the yeah. Dubois fight. He, um, I don't think you'll ever see that core promotion go on. I think he dangled that carrot and then he was like, well, actually, I'm, I'm busy. Let me do my thing and I'll speak to you another time. And he was like, Frank couldn't afford to sit around and wait for them fights to be made. Yeah, I agree. So, so he had to roll the dice there. and um, Yeah, but you're not... But, yeah, I think in, again, no, I'm thinking... Yeah. To, no, I think in terms of him being a force again in promote promotional terms, I think, like I say, I think th- unless unless he signs someone, I I don't see anybody other than Dennis McCann being his his main man. So is he going to be a force again? Yes or no? You like a politician, you Damien, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> With these answers. Yes or no? Yes. Yes, if Dennis McCann fulfills... Well, if he's going to base his... What I think he's capable of. If he's going to base his boxing career on Dennis McCann, I think he's got problems. Dennis is going to be a world champion, but he's going to need more than one, isn't he? Now, he's rolled dice yeah, he... before. That went pear shape. Yard, gone pear shape. Tyson Fury is with Bob Arum. So, where's his next big star coming from? Lyndon Arthur? Maybe. He's still, he's still got levels to go through on it to get to where he needs to be. But, I think Joe Joyce has got one foot out of the door already as well, hasn't he? Yeah, so I'm going to say, will Frank be a force again? Maybe, but you're going to say yes, aren't you? I'm going to go with no when you put it out there with regards to needing more than just a one fighter because you are completely right. He can't, he can't just base his entire future on one man. A young man at that, he needs four, maybe five world level fighters that he can push and build. Look, this is how this is how I look at it in layman's terms, right? Let's look at Dennis Hobson's table. We'll go off track here, right? Who's Dennis's best fighter? I couldn't even tell you at the minute, Porky. Well, Cash Alley, Tommy Frank. That's it, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'd go with Tommy Frank personally. Tommy Frank. Well, Tommy's not got a stoppage in 14 fights and he's been beat. Right? So then he's a flyweight. Cash Alley, he's won a central area, but he's just fought somebody who David Adelaide blew away in his third fight. Cash had just fought him in his 19th fight. So if you if you were going to be a matchmaker and work, work for Dennis or work in promotions for something like that, would you say to him, hey, Dennis, what... what are you going to sign somebody or what, what, what would you say? What would you say? You'd have to be pushing for signings, wouldn't you? Because there if you David go. Adelaide, if David Adelaide's blowing people away after three fights that you're pushing somebody that's had 19 and they're only just fighting that level there, it's, I think right. it speaks volumes. You need so signings. Let's, let's cross off at street to Frank Warren's stable. So we looked at Dennis's. Let's look at Frank's. You've got Tyson Fury. He's really with Bob Avin. Frank's got BT Sport for... British TV money for Tyson. He plays a little role, doesn't he? So we'll let Frank have... He's got a little piece of Tyson, but when push comes to push, he'll be on outside looking in and it'll go to high court. That's just how Frank is. That's where that one's going to go. Second one, Yard. He's been knocked out and he's just lost against somebody who beat him with a jab. We all agree on that, don't we? Right. Yeah. Third, so Yard. He's not won a British title yet. Third one, Daniel Dubois. He's just been in a fight, got a badly injured, he's going to be out for a bit. He's not Euro level yet, is he? No. So, who's the next one he's got? Dennis McCann, he's a prospect. Archer Sharp, maybe we'll go all the way, Dennis will go all the way, but maybe them too, but they're smaller men. So, where's the big star? Denzel Bentley, maybe. He's probably Euro level. Yeah, Denzel's a good fighter. He's European level. But there's no big standout pay-per-view names. Joyce has, Joyce has got his foot out at the door, hasn't he? So, yeah. he's Frank in a lot of trouble. I think he's in a lot of trouble, me. I think he's in a lot of trouble as regards his boxing future. Con- co- comparing him to the Frank of old, where he were the, were, were the daddy, wasn't he? Right? 
Everybody yeah. has the shelf life. It happened to Mickey Duff because Frank toppled him. And I think that Eddie's toppled Frank. You can pay private cracks however you want and throw accusations out and legal letters and bit of bluff this and it's not chess, it's checkers and everybody wants to play the game and all this rubbish. It is what it is, all that crap. The bottom line is, the bottom line is banging trouble as regards a boxing promoter. But he's got a massive TV contract. I don't think that BT Sport are lying around and give him another contract. That's my own opinion. I'm entitled to it. If they don't like it over there, they can lump it because I'm just going to give an opinion. I think he's banging trouble. Right? He needs signings. He needs some signings. And he's had to push these kids into fights that really they shouldn't be in. Archie Sharp's number four in here at WBO. Right? Yeah. Who's, who's his best win? There you go. World rank number four. Go look who's yeah, ranked again. number four across the other governing bodies. So the, the, these people don't learn from the mistakes. They didn't learn from the Debar mistake and the Yard mistake with WBO going that route. You can't rush kids. Frank never used to rush kids. He didn't rush cleverly, did he? Carl Zaggy and all them, did he? You know what I mean? No, I built them properly. Yeah, and Billy Joe. The days of building them properly are gone, and I think that's because of social media, because people they want it straight away, don't they? So I think mistakes are being made along the way, and kids are getting hurt. Debar's got hurt, isn't he? Looking yeah. back in hindsight, it shouldn't have really been in with Joe Josh, could it? But we were all led to believe it with he was this killer ice man. You're all right being a killer ice man when you're blowing bin men away. Do you know what I mean? Nathan Gorman's not a bin man, but when you're blowing bin men away, it looks good, doesn't it? Oh, it's great there. It's like being cock at school, isn't it? And knocking everybody about. But when somebody says, here, let's get at it, and you're like, oh, could be a 50-50 this. Not everybody wants to know, do they? So they all go, they, they get found out. But that's just my opinion on it. Uh Let's have a look what else we got here. Why is Adam Booth called the Dark Lord? Do you know? Does it make everybody train it dark or something? Adam, come see me. Give me a ring, Adam. I doubt that. I think he'd rather watch him train with the lights on. I don't know. Adam Adam Booth. Does anybody know why Adam Booth's called the Dark Lord? I'll tell you what. If anybody can tell me why Adam Booth's the Dark Lord, right? I'll get. I'll send you a porky teddy in post. How's about that? Somebody tell me why Adam Booth's the Dark Lord in an email, porkycorner at mail.com, and I'll send you the porky fluffy teddy. All right. Why is Adam Booth called the Dark Lord? And if, you, if, you, if you're if you training Adam Booth's gym, that's cheating, but we'll still send you a teddy. Because uh, we don't know, do we, Damien? I wouldn't know, porky, no. If Dillian White loses to Povetkin, is he a, gate, is he a gatekeeper like Del Boy? I'll be honest with you, my personal opinion there is he's, he already is after the first loss to Povetkin. Yeah. I, I think, again, going back to the way he's been navigated the WBC route, I don't think Eddie's had any... I think he's, I think he's thought to himself, oh, well, if we, if we get a crack at Wilder, lovely, but it'll keep Dillian quiet and just keep him off my back with regards to this. But in regards to a gatekeeper, um, yeah, I think he already is, like... Yeah, I think he had a he had a period after the Joshua loss where he improved massively over a twelve to eighteen month period, but he just seemed to maintain rather than continue to build on that. And the rest of the division hasn't. And I just think he's going to get found out again in the Povetkin fight, and then it'd be interesting to see where they where they take him from there. Because how do you rebuild a man that's give himself four nicknames? What are like, what the, body snatcher, the Black lone man, wolf, eh? the can, the lone wolf, the, the body lone wolf, snatcher, the can man, the, can man. Man. the big dog. He was called the yeah, big exactly. dog. One after a few fights. Oh, <laughs> that, so I mean, he's, re, he's rebuilt his cell when he didn't need to. He should have saved those nicknames when he's had a few more losses. And he can, then he could say, Oh, look, I'm the lone wolf now. Let me let me go again. But I just I just don't see a bright future for him at all. I see, no, no. I think, I see, I see Pavetkin icing well. him again. I think yeah. now Dillian White will be selling crack in Brixton. I do want the BMW with losses <laughs> on and a big chain. <laughs> with his brother Dean. Be, they'll be serving crack up then round Brixton. you got my tings beginning all that, mate. 
Uh, moving on then from the adventures of Tintin and the Can Man or the Can't Man. Anybody who wants it can't get it. Isn't that right, Dillian? Come see me. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, oh, there's another question here. Well, well is Dillian White's haircut a breadcrumb? Somebody's asked me, but we know answers to that. Yeah, it is. Tunde Ajayi, Spencer Field, and Rob Tebbett. Intense beef or laughing luncheon, mate? What do you think? Or funny um, pheasant? Funny pheasant, I think. From from what I've from what I've seen of it, and I can gather it's it's all unnecessary. Like cer certain things shouldn't have been leaked. Um, me personally, I haven't heard the voice notes that were leaked, but yeah, I just I just think that wasn't the place to take it and. Anything that comes Rob Tebbett's way now with regards to stick or if Spencer sticks it on him in public, like he, he needs to he needs to stand tall and take that on his chest, like because Spencer feeling we're carrying off on Twitter like some roadman gangster, on not he? I've been banned from Twitter, so I can't say nothing. Oh, like, join the club. I man. don't get none of the I, I have don't to get rely on the I have to rely on screenshots from uh, Roger the Dodger. Isn't that right, Roger? Uh, all right, then. Moving on from Spencer Fearon, uh, Tunde Ajayi. Lions in the camp. It's quite annoying, that, isn't it? That lion's in the camp. Dream it, believe it, become it. Well, I'll be dreaming about Dolphin from what I've heard Tunde soon. Uh, Tunde Ajayi, Spencer Fearon, a.k.a. Malcolm X, and Rob Bertie Smalls Tebbert. Uh, let's have a look. Who's at four? Oh, here we are. Will MTK get Sky dates when when New Deal when Eddie's deal finishes? Do you think they'll get dates? Yes or no? I think they deserve some. To be honest with you, I've watched a few of the shows on YouTube, and um, they put on a decent production. I think with a bit of pushing, a bit of Sky power, they'll they'll be able to push on and go further. I'd like to see it, so I'll say yeah. Does Yui Fury beat Dylan White if they fought? In six months from now, who wins? I think Yui beats him tomorrow. Yeah, I do. I think I think Yui beats him twelve months ago. I do. I think I Yui. Think Yui Fu it. Yeah, I think the Yui Fury that was in with Joseph Parker beats him. Yeah, I do. I think he scores, Dillian. I'd like. I'll be honest with you. I'd like to see Yui Fury in there with either Dillian, either Derek Chisora, George, or someone like that. Someone to really put like. I'd like to see Chisora uh, against Yui. Yeah, I would. I've been thinking on that a few days. like Because it, it, Chisora, Chisora's still ranked, isn't he? Yeah. Peter Fury, uh, I know you take that fight with Chisora because you told me. So, Eddie Earn, you won't be watching, but your gimps from Gimpville Island, that Frank Smith with all spots and Anthony, Anthony Lieber, you know, you know, old, old Mr. Lavender himself. Listen, I know you two are watching because you had his eyes and ears, and you, Dave Caldwell, mole in the hole. Let me just say this. Yui Fury will take the Chisora fight, pick up the phone, ring Eddie, and tell him to get in touch with Peter Fury and get Chisora out again before Chisora goes over and fights Joyce on a, on a brick top show, gets battered by Joyce, but Frank's then got him tied up with options. I don't know. We know about Frank's options. He's just like Eddie, isn't he? But... But yes, yeah, so get that fight on, Chisora Yui Fury. Yeah, I'd love to see yeah. that this year. I would. Uh, does Tony Bell you annoy you? Um, on Sky Shows, yeah, because he he panders to them. Um, I I like it when I like it when you get him away from a Sky camera and. You see, like the honest side of him, and when he's not so much talking boxing, you know. Like... You say bollocks then, talking bollocks. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know with Bellew. He's um, he is a company man, isn't he? Like, let, let, let's just call it how it is. He he really does pander to Sky. He, he... He's not a company man. He's a monitor lizard. <laughs> he, I'm sure he, I heard him on Sky the other night, and the other whenever it was, and he was saying, "Oh, we." Like referring, like he's on the board at Sky or something, and I was just thinking. I know, yeah, we. He was saying we we signed him, and he's done a good job for. That was it. We were like owning Malcolm and Sky Fox. They want it on TV. Yeah, I thought he was going to take over their Instagram for the day. 
Who's the biggest arse slicker out of the Bean Masons? Adam Bean Smith, Tony Bellew, Matthew Macklin, Spencer Juggiers Oliver, Johnny the Company Man Nelson, or Dave Mole in the Hole. Oh, well, who's the biggest rimmer out of them lot? I'd say with how quick he's burst onto the team, I'd say Caldwell, to be honest with you. Yeah, would you say he needs some TCP sending to him in post? I think he should be sponsored by him, to be honest with you, Porky. He's, um, like I said, the, the rest of them have got a couple of years, a few years under the belt at Sky or whatever, maybe four or five, however many years, but Caldwell's like part of He's like part of the furniture now, isn't he? Do you know after seeing the Do you know when I knew? Do you know when people kept telling me Dave Cole were wrong? And I swear he's never done that wrong to me. And then I watched him on TV one day at Monaco. You know, when Jamie McDonald got flogged in Monaco, but he won the decision, didn't he? But Sky had him yeah. by five rounds, didn't they? Yeah. And uh, Adam Smith went, eh, Oh, that's a shock, but this is why we love this sport so much, Johnny. That's where they coined the phase. Well, I were watching that at home. And I thought, God, Dave Caldwell's got back from changing room after McDonald got battered. He got back from changing room quick and he's ringside in his suit to do his commentating. That's when I thought, do you know what? He's a fucking wrong one. Because any trainer worth the salt had been in that dressing room consoling the fighter because he'd not had McDonald from the beginning. He jumped in when he was already a world champion, didn't he? But So he's probably gone ringside looking to see if he could get his claws into next. Well, no, he was working for Sky at night. That's when I thought. Oh. I thought, I don't think that would have been Mick Whale wouldn't have done that with Josh if that had been his fight. And I don't I don't think Chris Smedley would have done it with Liam or Mark Tibbs or anybody. They'd have been sat with a fighter when he just had a shallaking for 12 rounds. Do you know what I mean? That's when I thought, do you know what? He's, he makes it about him. But then again, he's got that bit of promoter in his blood, hasn't he? So maybe he wants to be a big star. I don't know, but... If he does out good, I'll say he's done good. But if he's behaving like a wrong, and I'll say it, Dave Caldwell, you're wrong, and and you know it. All right, then moving on from the adventures of Tintin Mark II. Uh, is Josh Warrington an happy bunny at the moment? Probably not, to be honest with you. How can he be? What do you think? Uh... Oh, well, sorry. His um, his last two fights were was one of them. Kid Galahad, his second to last one. Um, who was it after Galahad? I just don't. I just don't see. I just don't see him really try to push him up the levels. Never mind as a product, you know, as a like as a yeah, as a product. I don't see him try to push him up the rankings or as a product. So I don't think he can really be happy with that situation, to be honest with you. He's got to be taking a look around and thinking, what's the plans? Yeah, I agree. Do you think there's a bit of intense beef there between Galahad and uh, Warrington? Um, I call it playground stuff myself, to be honest with you. It all seems a bit petty. Well, this is how I look at it, right? I've been following it, and obviously we are, nobody's saying that Galahad's not got every shot in book because he's he, he can do everything, can he? He's technically up there, isn't he? He's got every shot, hasn't he? But what he lacks, do you know what he lacks? Go on. Balls. And you know what else he's got inside his body? He's got the heart of a breadcrumb. You know why? When he gets in that ring, he doesn't engage. He doesn't engage. He's talking tonight on TV like he's some roadman killer, saying that Josh Warrington throws a thousand punches. Well, if Calzaghe used to throw a thousand punches a fight, and he wasn't knocking everybody out at world level. And he's saying people want knockouts and fights and all that, not people throwing a thousand punches. When have you ever come away from a, a Gid Gallard fight and said, Do you know what? That was brilliant. I can't wait to see a Gid Gallard fight again. You can't, can you? Do you know why? Because he stinks every arena out that he fights in. Do you know what he's known as in Sheffield? The stinkinator. Who wants to fight him? He doesn't engage, does he? Have you seen? Go and watch Kid Gallard versus Josh Whale. He didn't engage and he, did, he fought the same fight against Warrington. But he's saying Warrington's a con man, right? For, for, for how he fights and all that. Con man. Well, what's he? He stinks out arenas and takes a paycheck. And he's been done for drugs, performance enhancing drugs. 
but he's not a con man, and Warrington is, who's won every belt there is to win, fills out stadiums, packs out arenas. What? Am I a lollipop or something here? Am I, am I missing something here? Am I, am I eating? What, you tell me. It's like it's like Galahad wants to be the second coming and Naz done he, but he's just never going to be. Like... He wants to pick a vacant belt up against the bin man. That's all he wants to do. We'll move on from him anyway because he bores me. Kid Galahad, I'd never buy a ticket to one of your fights ever again. And then I'll tell you another thing as well. I said that about Johnny Nelson after Carlos de Leon fight. You know, do you know when Johnny Le- Johnny Nelson fought Carlos de Leon in Sheffield? It's, it's voted the worst ever fight to ever happen in the boxing in f- hundreds of years of boxing history. That's the worst ever fight, mate. Johnny Nelson against Carlos de Leon. The smuggled Johnny Nelson, right? Out of that, out of, out of that Sheffield that night, right? We a blanket over his head like Peter Sutcliffe when he when he got caught in Sheffield being Jack the Ripper. They smuggled Johnny Nelson out of Sheffield on back of a Ford Cortina two liter GL on X plate. Smuggled him out of arena, mate, on back seat like that, laid like down blanket on his head. That's how bad it was. I said I'll never buy another ticket to a Johnny Nelson fight ever again. And he continued to stink out arenas. Cause that's, that's maybe that's where Galahad's picked it up. Maybe that's where Kid Galahad's picked it up well, from. Maybe that was where Kid Galahad's a lot better than Johnny Nelson, technician wise. I think Kid Galahad, if he had a, if he didn't have the heart of a breadcrumb, if he had the heart of a lion, I think he'd be able to. He'd, he'd be the complete fighter. He's got everything except that he don't go for it. He doesn't go for it. I know it's the sweet science, but don't start talking about being an ice man and calling people con men. He tried to pinch that belt against Josh Warrington and he come unstuck. And that's yeah, why you, know, you can cry about saying he won and that, but when you're at B-side and you're not selling tickets because you've got a crap style, you're not going to get the decision. Look, we know how it is, don't we? So, Kid Galahad, unlucky. So, But if he does fight Josh Warrington again, I'll be very, very surprised from what I'm, from what I'm, from what I'm hearing around Campfire. That fight's never going to happen. Right, uh, I think we've done that one now, have we? Yeah, yeah, I'll catch you on that. Uh, let's have a look. Mm-hmm. Oh, we've got nearly done now. Uh, Frank Warren's interview. Did you see him doing shoulder roll on IFL? Yeah, he's little. Frank looks a bit rough, doesn't he? He's, he's caught up with him all this. He's had COVID, he? which we reported on a, a while back. And he's battled it, so well done. But I think Eddie's put him through at Minster, and he's looking worse, worse for wear now. It reminds me of Joe Bugner. He kept coming back, didn't he, Joe Bugner? Yeah, Frank, his back's definitely shot. against the wall. Eh? His back's definitely against the wall, and I don't think having COVID to help set back, I don't think that will have helped him either. Uh, I seen the interview yesterday with him and he's, he seemed to be back to his usual chirpy self, but yeah. time will tell. Yeah, Frank, let, let's hope so. But I think Frank, I, I, I think we could be seeing Ender Frank and his lads taking over. He really, really, really looks browbeaten and he's had an awful year with Dubois and uh, Yard. And there's the, Fury's not been out since Feb, so Fury's a year out at ring in the next month. And I, I think that it's took its toll on Bricktop, and uh, I don't know. It's that must be disheartening for him as well. Like he's, yeah, when he's been he's top on... dog, hasn't he? But he was disheartening. Yeah. It was so funny, he went mad in engine on Mickey Duff. He's like, he, his memory went and all, and all that, and uh, he, he, he were a bit. He went a bit bitter, and obviously Fred like, Fra- seen him off, didn't he? <coughs> Yeah, the cartel like, he them all off. <laughs> like Frank must have been counting his lucky stars when Tyson Fury landed in his lap, but then he's kind of had him snatched away by Bob Arum, hasn't yeah. he? And like, yeah, it, that's going to take its toll as well. He's going to think, like, where do I catch a break in this day and age? Yeah, in other news, Dion Jumbers uh, left Steve uh, Goodwin, his, his, his manager for the British title. and Steve's delivered for him and uh, he's helped him out in last year and done really well for him and that got him in a good position. And I think I- I'm surprised he's not re signed with Steve, but uh, I think that uh, sometimes boxing it throws up surprises, doesn't it? Do you think there's a lot of people nowadays in boxing that are not board license holders and they're in everybody's e roll? 100%, yeah. 
they think they're saying, oh, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. Listen, well, this is how I look at it, right? Do you know when a fighter turns pro, right? He takes everything in, doesn't he? He takes it all in and doesn't send out. But then once they start, once they get, you know, down the line and they're doing all right and, and a bit of money starts coming in, it's surrounded by people. And this is what I don't like about the sport. Everybody's an expert. Everybody's hanging out of the back of you. Everybody wants to be a friend, but people should take a lesson. A, a, sorry, a leaf out of David A's book or learn a lesson from it. When, when he got beat by Carl Thompson, they had a nightclub. This is one of Dennis's shows. This uh, Adam Boog rung Dennis and said, "You're our promoter. We want uh, you're our manager promoter. We want Carl Thompson for IBO." Dennis says, "Oh, you're not ready for Carl yet. David's only had ten fights or something." He says, "Look." You're our man, make it happen. So Dennis says, well, just remember that I said that you're not to take this fight. Anyway, he got knocked out David A, didn't he? Well, they had a nightclub booked and all that because he'd been knocking everybody out, hadn't he? Well, he were, everybody went to the nightclub and David A was sat in hospital with his missus and Anthony Small, you know, Small, Anthony Small, he was... Uh, I'll not say about Anthony Small, actually, because he's, he's liable to come round to my house and... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say out about it. I'll not say out about Anthony Small. Anthony Small's a character and I like him. And I, and I always thought he was a world-class puncher, but he didn't work out for him. But I don't want to upset him. <laughs> could, end up on, could end up on Skid Row, can I? Could but, end up at your door, Porky. You know, if Anthony Small come to me, no, I'd go... <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but he he's uh, what what's he gone? He's he's gone. Uh, is he radical? He's gone all radical and that now, hasn't he? Or whatever, or he did do and that. But we wish him well. But he was only one who went to went to hospital to see David A. Everybody else were bopping away, weren't they? And after party on the free bar, free bar and free grub and all that. You know, like you do ponces. But and people should take a, a leaf out of that. But all them people weren't there for him when he needed them. And this is how fickle it is. People only want to be around winners. You know, when you, you know, you know, when you, when you're at school, right, there's, there's people in football team, they're the winners. The ones who don't get into school football team, nobody knows them at school, do they? Do you know what I mean? When you're coming through at school, nobody, nobody speaks about, they're just like also runs, aren't they? And, and I think that boxers should be a bit more loyal to the managers and, who knows? They might show a bit more loyalty. I mean, but it's a two-way street, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? But I look at it like this. When you get a fighter so far and then he don't stay with you, I think it's a bit disloyal, me. I have a problem with the Tyson one with Mick Hennessy. Massive problem with it. So I think it's spoiled a great story. But I just like to see a bit of loyalty. You can stay around too long and then it, and you think, well, in any job in boxing, you can think, you know, what am I doing here? What, where, where are we heading? And then, you, but... You, I think you have to just see it to end until it becomes unbearable. But when the, when you're on a winning roll, why leave? That's how I look at it. What do you think? Yeah, I agree with you. And um, even if you get a loss, I think a bit of delusion comes into it. Like you say, you get people in your ear and they're, yeah. they're like questioning, pe they're questioning in your people. In your ear rolling up your arsehole, aren't they? Yeah, that's it. And they know what's best for you when the worst is going for you. Do you know what I mean? It's. I think... Frank Warren says the the Fury Joshua fight's not made yet. I've just watched it on here. So it's not made yet. It's not, he's still we're still in talk. So what's Eddie Hearn going on about? Are they just lying to us and spinning as a narrator to keep us on oh, like they did with Floyd and Pacquiao one? Is this what's happening? They're using social media and all these fake channels and all these people they've got behind them in media to keep spinning this story. But do you know what? Can I just say right? It's pretty weird. I get cheesed off with boxing news because I, I I live it don't know 20 18 hours a day but let me just say this even I'm getting fed up with hearing about Fury versus Joshua now I'm fed up now are you I, I just it's become boring yeah I just, I just want that fight to be made or for the talk of it to just go away for now and for him to just focus on who is going to be in front of them because if you've got Eddie Earn saying that it's 90 percent done and then you've got 95%. Frank Warren. 95% now, 95. Well, 
there you go, that downplays Frank's involvement even more than in my eyes. Because if you've got Frank going against the grain saying it's nowhere near done, then that tells me that he's the 5% that's not done. If it is 95% done, yeah, his input is 5%. Whose input? Frank Warren's? Yeah, if Eddie, if what Eddie Earns saying is right, that fight's 95% done, then the other 5% is Warren going against the grain saying it's not done yet. Well, I'm hearing from somebody who knows Shelley Finkel that there's there's all sorts of stuff going on behind the scenes and that Eddie Earns just going off with himself and doing what he wants. Same way. As, as Deontay Wilder not parted ways with Shelley Finkel, yeah, I've seen Kevin ways, Barry say. That he's blaming Finkel for not making rematches have gone by this date, but Finkel apparently, for, I don't know if it's 100%, apparently Finkel said, well, we couldn't do because of the pandemic and all that. It's all, it's all a bit of a mess. And Tyson's 11 month out ring is no fight on the calendar. And everybody's saying, No, oh, it's a done deal, Saudi. Well, it don't look like a done deal. There's going to have to be some palms greased, isn't there, to get this fight happening? Yeah, absolutely. And I think I think it could be easier with what's going on in Wilder's camp. Like, it might be easier to get Wilder to step aside than anybody else because with what he's got going on, if, he's, if he has parted with Shelley Finkel, obviously he got rid of Mark Breland. There's only. I think there's only JD has left in that team now, is that? Yeah. All right, then. Uh, what have we done now? UFC fights. They're fighting top guys, aren't they? And we're not at... We're, boxing's not at the moment, is it? No. We all seem to be waiting on people to say, well, 60-40, uh, 50-50, uh, 46 is 70 30 uh, your name up poster first. No, my name up poster first. I want these gloves. I want these type of gloves. I want to wear this robe, this TV company, that TV company, blah, 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 blah. But they've exhausted all avenues now. And I think it's going to be, well, I think if it's not made this year, it's overkill. Because I can't go through any time after this year investing in this fight. I can't. Tyson Fury's been a pro since 08. Joshua won Olympic medal in 2012. Next year is 2022. I mean, what, are they going to put him in ring when they're old, like Mayweather and Pacquiao? That's it. Does it become another? Does it become another Kel Brook and Amir Khan? Just drag it out and just keep dragging it until there's no mate. wheels left on it. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah, things in it, but I'm. Uh... It's one of the things, but I'm off. Uh, I think that's about it now. I'm off to get some. I've ordered some uh, ravioli and uh, some red wine. I'm gonna go pick it up now, and uh, that's about it. Uh, thanks for coming on. No, oh, thanks for having me. Been emotional, Damien. Been like pulling teeth, really. <laughs> Don't I need free out? I'm having a lot of what I've got left. When I can get out of in country, Jesus, <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. It. Yeah, it's 150 quid test to get out, and then you're another one before you come back in it. Plus, your flights, they've got oh, somebody's making some money off it all, aren't they? You're gonna take your camera with you and do videos at side of the pool. Good thinking, boy. Wonder, I might do hey, there's a pool there as well. Where I'm going, I might do that. Yeah, we're well, chatting anybody up can... with no teeth. <laughs> I can see it now. Helmets had a month at the side of a pool. <laughs> Do it with one of your fil put your filter on. I don't know. I've been told Bulgaria there's a there's a lot of unrest over there. I'm just I'm just worried that I could end up stuck there or something. You know what I mean? I like I don't like, I don't like going abroad. Like, I'm not keen on it. Like, I'm You'll be all right with unrest out there. You can buy a knuckle duster from a kids shop, kids toy shop. Pretty rough themselves over there. Pretty, I've been told that it's pretty rough. When I was over there before, Peter Fury Jr. got locked up over there, and uh, he said it was pretty rough. <laughs> I can imagine. I've been to Bulgaria twice. Once when I was a kid, and there was a guy walking down the street with a grizzly bear on the lead, walking it like it was a dog. And then I went five, maybe five, seven years ago, and it's a lot more civilized now, a lot more on the up. But, um, yeah, you go into a souvenir shop and they've got tasers next to kids' Rubik's Cubes and things. Yeah, it's not good, mate. But uh, somebody asked me, oh, next time you do a video, Russ, can you mention uh, a couple of things? Crawford Ashley's channel, The Spiritual Boxer. Crawford Ashley, The Spiritual Boxer YouTube. And 
Can I mention what I watch at night? I don't know why people are interested in what I'm watching, but I'm, at the moment I'm watching something called Unsolved, where it's about Tupac and Biggie on Netflix. I'm watching that, and I've just watched uh, last night Operation Odessa. If anybody wants yeah. to watch something good, have you seen that? I haven't. No, I've just started Power. You started? Oh, yeah, yeah. Power, Operation yeah. Operation Odessa, it's... Uh, about drug smuggling, and that's one of the best things I've ever seen. So, and it, all that doesn't even trigger me off. Look at me, you know, I'm still so <laughs> It's killing me. You are, you're not <laughs> on the wagon. Borders, open the wagon. borders, Boris. <laughs> open Felix Stone. King George Docks at all. For fuck's sake. All we're doing is piling dough up. <laughs> Go out anywhere. No good, is it? Can't no, that's a nightmare, mate. Last time I was looking hard at blinds. You know, all night. Can't remember <laughs> it. I could buy a gun and twitching. Uh, oh, God, yeah. I've got, I usually have my ears. I've got extra hearing. But uh, now I've turned all that in. I know. You've got to grow up, haven't you, one day. But all right, then, Damien. Well, up. You take care. Thanks for coming you on. Too, mate. And uh, we'll get this out tomorrow dinner time. All right. Lovely. I promise you, mate. I'll premiere it for tonight for tomorrow dinner. When I All get, right, Porky. i to get some sleep. All right, mate, you take care. Peace. You too, mate. I'll speak soon. Peace out. Right. Right. Well, that was uh, Damien from... I forgot where he said he was from. Now. He's from the UK anyway. Oh, uh, Morecambe, Lancaster. Uh, so it was good to have him on. And that's about it, uh, boys and girls. So peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep sporting boxing. Big shout out to uh, Rico and Terry. Hope they're well. Give Smith a shout out. Voice of casual darts. Should we give Ozzy Smith a shout out? He hasn't texted me this year, Ozzy Smith. He's going through a not texting porky phase. I'm gutted. Oswald Smith. Big shout out to Andy Patterson, eh? The voice of hardcore boxing, really. Eh? Andy Patterson. He's the man, isn't he, Andy? If you need to know anything, anything about boxing, listen to Andy Patterson when he's had a whiskey. He is the man. And that's about it, boys and girls. Have a good evening. <laughs>